up, you homies? It's your homegirl, Natalie, and today I am bringing you seven DIY wall decor projects that you can work on today or this weekend. So I've had some of this footage literally for over a year, dudes, but you know what? Better late than never. It's finally edited, so yeah. All these projects are super affordable, with most of them being under like five bucks, all right? Under five dollar holla. Uh, the last two are a little bit more expensive, ranging from 20 to 25 bucks. I also sprinkled in two home decor designing tips for you as well, okay? Your girl got your back. But before we start, I wanted to give a super huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I thought this pairing would be pretty good because like we're doing some DIY stuff and Skillshare is all about learning new things. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, they are an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and just get lost in creativity. Especially with what's going on currently right now in the world, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a really great way to help you structure your time and just set up achievable goals. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. You can connect with the support of fellow creatives, you can enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. So whether you're just looking to fend off boredom or to focus on self-care through creativity or just want to join a similarly creative community, then Skillshare is a place to keep you learning. So the class that I recently took is called Everyday Minimalism, Find Calm and Creativity in Living Simply by Erin Boyle. And I know you might be like, girl, there is nothing minimalist about your life, about you. Um, and yeah, I get that. However, but what I really liked about her classes that she didn't like make you feel like you have to just subscribe to like one notion of what being a minimalist is. It was more so how can minimalism can fit into your home. After taking the class, I was able to, you know, look at some different spaces in my apartment and been like, oh, you know what? Maybe I should change this. Really did enjoy her class. So thank you, girlfriend. If you're trying to learn something new, Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people that click the link in the description box to explore your creativity. And after that, it's going to be like $10 hala a month. Now, dudes, it is time to finally go to this video. I'm so excited to show you guys this. I really hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, all right, let's go. Our first project is a simple Polaroid wall. My walls are covered with wallpaper, so we're going to be using Bostix Blue Tack and Prestic. This does not rip your wallpaper when you remove it, but you should still be careful with removing anyways. This is basically like a putty that holds things together. Now I will advise that this can leave a bit of a greasy stain if your wallpaper is porous. In my last two apartments, my wallpapers were non-porous, so they didn't leave a stain. This one though, um, yeah, it says you can remove the stains with a citrus-based cleanser, but I literally have no idea where to find that in Korea. So yeah, this is my reality. <laughs> but I mean pick your poison either drill a bunch of holes in your wall or have a little grease that isn't super visible unless you're looking at it a certain way next you'll be using little clothes pins and just clip them to your Polaroid add a little ball of the blue tack to the back and just stick them on I would suggest though okay listen very carefully I would suggest not putting these Polaroids anywhere where they will get direct sunlight because girl I just moved mine and there's a yellowish tint that was left okay damn guessing from the reaction of the chemical and the Polaroid and the heat behind it so way to go, girl. <laughs> you could also use this method to post up any prints or posters that you'd like to showcase. I like using the clothespins so that way it's easy to switch out any photos. This project is really easy and super cute. I love being able to look back on all these memories when I'm just, you know, standing around my place. Project number two is a hat wall that is equal parts storage hack and wall decor. Using the putty from the four and these hooks that I got from Daiso, just add the blue tack to the back of them and stick them on. Really use all your strength to secure these onto your wall. I recommend just adding enough of the blue tack so when it's pressed to your wall, the hook is about less than a half a centimeter away from it. If there's too much putty and the hook is too far away from the wall, then it'll eventually just fall off. Same goes if you use too little of the blue tack and it's too flush against the wall, it'll also fall off too. Trust me, I speak from experience. This is gonna take a couple tries to find a good medium, but when they're all up, wait a bit before putting anything on. I just think it helps in solidifying the bond, I guess. Then just put up your hats and you're done. I wouldn't recommend putting anything too heavy on these, so that's why something like a hat is a good option. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just- That hurt so badly, yo. <laughs> Anyways, here's a completed project. My third DIY is something that you've all seen in my previous apartments and that's a geometric washi tape design. This is so cute. We'll be using this washi tape from Daiso which honestly wasn't the best but they got rid of the previous brand that I used to use. 
am. Anyways, I'll be using this Photoshop process that I use a lot with decorating. I take a photo of what I need decorated and I try out the designs on Photoshop so I don't have to make any commitment just yet. I pasted a photo I took of the actual washi tape into the file so that way I can use the eyedropper tool to copy the colors so I get the closest to a true color match when making my designs. I like this method so then I could play around with the size, the shape, rotation of each one till I find a design that I like. This is very tedious and extra of me, but that's just me. <laughs> And now we get to work. Here you'll need either an X-Acto knife or a razor paper cutter. The good thing about washi tape is that if you make a mistake and you don't like the positioning of something, you could just peel it off super easily, man. But still be careful when doing so, especially if you have more older or worn out wallpaper. Paint should be fine though. Washi tape isn't thick, so when you're cleaning up the edges, just put a little bit of pressure any more than that and you endanger girl, okay? Because then you'll be cutting your wallpaper or paint. Here I put this line too straight so that when I added in the other long piece, it didn't give me that 3D effect I was looking for. So I just peel it off and I fixed it. When you're dealing with the outer corners, don't clean up the edges until you get all your three pieces taped on. If you do it before the third piece, you might end up making the shape a little bit shorter than intended. Optionally, you can add clear tape to these corners so that they stay put. Something I like to do is to add pressure to the tape with my fingers so that it like really holds on to the wallpaper. Don't worry, when you peel this off carefully of course, you won't be ripping any of your wallpaper. The second method of making these shapes is making the two triangles first and then adding in the connecting lines to make it 3D. And we're done! So uh, that footage was from a year ago and I made some changes since then. Here's another good graphic wall art that I recently made on a complete whim. <laughs> You'll need interior film, interior film, <laughs> interior film, why is that so hard to say? Um, or contact paper. Spread out your paper, get a sharpie and make a shape. Don't overthink it, okay, you'll get better results if you don't. Like the first one I did was just completely like free flow and I was just like dee 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 and it came out super cute. This one I ended up really overthinking it and it wasn't as fun but you know, like, do you boo? I would suggest just go with the flow, man. Just Bob Ross, happy trees, happy trees. Next, cut out the shape and head to your wall. Figure out which way you want to place it, peel off the paper and stick it on. If you need to make any adjustments after you place it on your wall, just like with our washi tape designs, use the same method of using a paper cutter. This is also very easy to peel off as well, just in case if you want to change the positioning like I ended up doing. And there you go. You have a super awesome and modern wall art. This is so freaking cool. I love this so much. <laughs> okay homies, here's a tutorial on how to make multiple pom-poms using fixtures up in your house. You just need two strong poles at any distance away from each other. Like you can use the legs of a table, that's cool. Tie your yarn around both poles making a strong knot. Now wrap your yarn till you get it to a thickness that you want. Then secure it by tying the yarn into another piece like so. For the thickness that I'm going for, I will be getting three pom-poms. Now I'm tying three pieces of string for my three pom-poms. Double looping them around the blue yarn to make sure it's tight and secure. This is very important. I suggest using the same color but for the tutorial purposes I'm using black so you can see it. Now you're going to cut in between the black yarn. Use fabric scissors for this. Trust me, it will make it so much easier. Then I just took a needle and yarn and put it through my little pom-poms to make this garland. I used the same method with varying thicknesses to get the pom-poms from my curtains and the rug that I made. This next project is a yarn fringe headboard-esque thing. <laughs> you'll need a bunch of yarn and two wire grids. Cut off long strands of yarn, and I'm saying long because you'll be folding them to secure to the grid. First, loop the folded end under the wire and loop the other ends through it to form a knot. How long the pieces will be depends on how much of a specific color you want to use. 
Cutting each individual piece was getting way too tedious, so I went with two methods. First one, looping the yarn around my arm and my hand, and two, wrapping it around my knee <laughs> and my foot, then cutting the yarn hangs the opposite ends. Listen, yo, you gotta use what you got at hand, and I got my foot and my hand. <laughs> For both methods, you can wrap a whole ball of yarn, making this process much easier and faster. I didn't prep a design at all for this. I just went with the flow and just kept adding on where I wanted. The great thing about this is that if you're not happy with any placement, you could just take it off and redo it somewhere else. I will suggest to put the base colors first on your grid. This will help when you're going to add in those extra pops of colors to your design. Uh, this is taking forever. I'm back Those guys were talking Day two. Yeah, so I did not think it was gonna take this much time, but it did. I suggest when making this, doing it on a table so you're not hunched down all the time like I was, cause oof, my back was in pain. He's my back, back hurts so much, I'm doing that. but it's gonna be worth it. It's this, gotta be worth I feel it. That you found. These last two skines were more thin, like embroidery thread. So I bunched three or four, three or three or four. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I bunched three or four pieces together to loop around the wire. <laughs> When that's all done, and now it's time for a trim, chop chop, <laughs> or snip snip, I, I don't know. To hang this up, we're going to use the same Daiso hooks from before, but adding a piece of cardboard to the back of it. This way, the bond with the blue tack and the wall is stronger. You really gotta put all your weight into it when you squish it down to your wall. Per grid, I use four to five hooks to hang it up, and ta-da, we done! It's cute, right? Now we get to our huge project, y'all. This is taken actually from the blog Sugar and Cloth. I will be linking their post down below, but I did a very different method of putting it together for those of us that can't nail anything to our walls. <laughs> you'll need a color palette and a design. For the design, I just did it on my phone. From there, you'll need a staple gun, fabric, and optionally a square wooden rod. First, just lay down your fabric and add a weight so it doesn't move. Referencing your design, sketch it and cut it out. You'll be repeating the same steps for each color. Now, this method is from Sugar and Cloth and is best to use if you can actually nail something to your wall because with all this fabric, especially given how big I made mine, the measurement for mine actually is 38 by 57 inches. You'll need something sturdy holding it up. So once you're done cutting out your layers, take all the excess fabric around the rod and use a staple gun to secure the layers across the backside of the rod. Then cut off the excess. From here, you can screw eye hooks and loop string or wire to hold it up. Now, my plan was to hold it up with putty, but it was way too heavy, so here we get to my method. For this, you'll need iron-on tape. You'll be using the last layer of fabric as your base. How we're going to make this light enough that it could be held up is by making each layer like a puzzle piece. You will only cut out the portion of that layer that you can visibly see. The rest is hidden from the next layer, so it isn't needed, you know? When you are sketching out your pieces, do it an inch away from the edge of the next piece that will be on top of it. This way, the likelihood of making a mistake is low. And here's your first piece. Pin it down so it doesn't shift and add in the iron-on tape to the edges and then just iron it. Easy as that. Now just repeat these same steps till you get to the final top layer. For pieces like this hot pink one where there's two layers overlapping on it, make sure to sketch it out with both layers on top. This way you're ensuring you get the lightest possible weight for your wall art. Of course, like with all these projects, it's up to you with how big or small you want it to be. So take that into consideration when choosing what method you like to use. 
My method made me realize I didn't need to buy all this fabric, honestly, except for the first fabric base layer. The rest just ended up being small pieces, so I was left with a lot of extra fabric, so keep that in mind when making this project. I also had to re-staple everything down because I had taken them out. Then I just added a lot of balls of putty onto the wood to secure it. I also added in some yarn fringe that's literally just taped onto the fabric, so yeah. I will suggest if you're doing my method to not have such a thick piece of wood, eventually that part kept falling down, making the rest of my wall art fall down like every two to three weeks, man. It was horrible. I would wake up like, did it fall down? Did it survive another day? I don't know. And because that got tiring real quick, what I ended up doing was hot gluing three cardboard panels to the back of the wall art and then adding the putty to that to hold it up. Fabric doesn't hold on to putty all that great, so adding in the cardboard was a better surface for it to hold on to. I also switched out the wood for this much lighter one. Oh, and here's a quick tip I like to use when making a gallery wall. Lay out all your picture frames on the floor and snap a photo. Take another photo of the wall with your picture frames propped on it. Make a transparent layer with the frames on it and then choose a frame in the picture where they're propped up to resize it to. This way when you resize all your frames, they'll be resized correctly. Once they're resized, then you can make each frame its own individual layer and now you can play around with the design. I know there's the paper method of doing a gallery wall, but I like doing it this way because not only do you get to see how they'll fit in your wall, but you also get to see if the prints will go together, if the colors will go together, or if they'll clash by being next to one another, things like that. All right, homies, so that's it for this video. Let me know which one was your favorite. Um, don't Someone just not in the door. Anyways, make sure to give this video two big thumbs up and I'll say two because you probably got two Gmail accounts. Don't be a liar. If you do any of these designs, take a picture, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, tag your girl. And that's it. I hope this video is finding you safe and healthy. I hope you're continuing to keep you, your loved ones, your neighbors, and everyone around you safe by staying home. That's all that we can really ask for, you know? Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one. That's it. Again, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And once again, to you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Bye.